Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Okay. Did that count against our eight minutes yet? Okay. All right. Welcome. Hello, I'm uh, Jim Crabb, CEO and Chairman of uh, Connex, one of the co-founders. And today we're going to tell you a little bit about Connex, our, our company. We're coming up from Tacoma. That's where we're based. We have eight employees down in Tacoma, Washington. And we have a code team in India. And with me today, I have our, our president and COO, newest addition to our management team, uh, Jay Gallinetti. And he has had some fantastic experience. He was one of the first 10 folks on at GoTo, which eventually over four years scaled to 600 folks and became Overture that we just heard about from uh, Tim Draper. So with that, I'll let Jay introduce okay. himself. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Tim Draper's speech was perfect setup for what we're going to talk about today. Um, we're going to talk about why now is the time for newspapers to change. We're going to talk, they're in crisis, and we think that creates an opportunity, just as Tim said. Uh, Overture.com, who he mentioned, um, they solved a problem. They solved a big problem, as he said, which is, the internet allowed us to create an online, a real-time auction for consumer attention online via sponsored listings. And we think we have an equal opportunity here with newspapers and really happy to be here to tell you about our new strategic direction about how we're going to be a problem solver for newspapers. Uh, how many here recall the recent incident at the Puyallup Fair about two months ago where a ride tipped over with kids on it and, you know, anyone here see that or hear about that? Okay, well, we got a little story about it. I'm going to turn it back to Jim to tell you about that story. Okay, so I was at the Puyallup Fair when that happened. And these are actually pictures I took from my iPhone. About 10 minutes later, after this ride had tipped over, I was walking with my two-year-old uh, son, four-year-old daughter, came around the corner, this ride had toppled over, there were parents everywhere, ambulances arriving on scene, police, it was a pretty terrifying thing to see. So I immediately whipped out my iPhone, I took some pictures, took pictures of the ride, and then I watched as the helicopters came over, and after about another 20 or 30 minutes, the reporters started to show up on scene, they started to interview people, so to kind of illustrate my point, I I took pictures of the reporters as they interviewed. Now, as soon as I did this, I Twittered this, shot it over to my Facebook, and immediately this was live and out on the web within a matter of minutes, right? These guys hadn't even packaged their story and gotten it up to the, to the editor to be packaged and distributed until hours after the fact. So, Jim, all right, what does that have to do with newspapers? Okay, well, with newspapers, the big question that comes up from that really got me thinking. Obviously, the landscape for newspapers has dramatically changed in the last uh, couple of months, right? In the last six months. Um, why is it, when I was in this situation, that I didn't upload that content to the newspaper site? And there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, one, I'm not really enabled to do it on most newspaper sites. The technology just isn't there, and if it is there, it's awful hard to do. Two, when we want to share something, content of any kind, we want to share it with the people that are important to us. I don't want to share it with a nameless brand or a nameless ocean of people. I want to share it with the people that are relevant to me, that are connected to me. And right now, my audience doesn't live in the newspaper portal. So, you know, traditionally, the newspaper, prior to TV and radio, the newspaper used to be the hub of the community. It used to be where you went to find out who was doing what in the community. It was the only place to find this information. Nowadays, you can get that from a multitude of sources. And internet companies have begun to really pirate and cut up the revenue streams of the newspaper. You've got Craigslist eating away at the classified advertising. You've got local search, uh, search engines that are eating away at their advertising revenue base. You've got dating sites that have taken away personals. And the list goes on and on as more disruptive technologies are brought into play. So someone needs to teach these guys how to fish. Someone has to bring them online. There's a huge opportunity here. This is a multi-billion dollar industry. So Jay, how are we going to renovate, as Tim Draper would say, the newspaper industry? Yes. Thanks, Jim. Good question. We do want to completely renovate the newspaper industry. They've been around for hundreds of years doing things the same way forever, and finally the crisis has hit and they're trying to figure out what do they do. The Connect solution is 
that we believe if they can implement an integrated, engaging social community surrounding their website, that they can engage, they have the brand, they have the audience, they need to learn how to re-engage the audience through an online medium and that will create incremental revenue streams to offset the declining revenue from subscriptions and other previous forms. Um, <clears throat> this is a picture of the member homepage that on, the, on a Connects community. So if an individual joins a community, this is the homepage they, they see when they come and log in. So it provides them the relevant information that's interesting to them, what, what the people they care about within the community, what are they doing, what articles are they commenting on, what events are they attending, what are they doing. Um, obviously Facebook and Twitter have proved beyond the shadow of a doubt that people are interested in what other people are doing, the people they care about. They're really curious as to the important people, that, what are they doing, and Connects allows them to keep track of people within, excuse me, within their local geographic community. Connects offers a hosted web-based social media platform that seamlessly integrates into the newspaper website and creates engagement amongst the communities, amongst the members of the community. We have two successful pilots running today, Wenatchee World in Central Washington, uh, the Business Examiner in South Puget Sound, and we've recently been approved by a nationwide newspaper buying cooperative to be the sole uh, solution provider for social media to their 1,600 newspapers across the country. Um, they represent 73 percent of all the private newspapers across the country and we're now a prefer preferred supplier as of a week ago so we can begin marketing to them directly uh, to create engagement and more revenue streams for the newspapers. So Jay, you talk about uh, additional revenue streams, and I see the Wenatchee World homepage up right here. How do people monetize off of this system? How does the newspaper make money? Right. Another great question, Jim. Uh, it's engagement. We call it the Connects Engagement Engine. And it starts here in the upper left, and let's take an example where I log on to the, the newspaper website and I decide that I'm going to buy a ticket to the, to the YouTube concert at the Gorge. So I go online, I buy a ticket, and the Connects engine is in the middle, the blue part. Um, An alert, and if I choose to, I can say, notify my network of friends in the community. An alert is sent to that network. The network reads the alert, finds out I'm going to concert at U2, concert at the Gorge two weeks from now. Some number of those people log into the website, they check it out. Some number of them may choose to buy a ticket. Um, Uh, and they log in and then they might have other activity. They might go, well, that's interesting, but I'm going to go to this concert over here. The whole idea is to re-engage individuals to bring them back to the website. Let's take an example where I download a coupon. If I want to notify my network of, uh, within the community, they'll know that I've got this coupon. If I comment on an article and I want people to know that I commented on an article, I can engage the Connects Engagement Engine and they're automatically notified. Where are we at? What's it? Okay. Uh, finally, uh, member benefits. Uh, we have a series of benefits starting with the member. If we can provide value content to the member, then we can provide opportunities to the advertiser and if they can solve the issues of their two constituencies, advertisers and consumers, we provide value to them and ultimately to our shareholders. So imagine if you could have a newspaper website with the engagement of Facebook. Okay? If, if they could do that and create that much engagement, user-generated content, relevant information, they can once again become the hub of the, their local community. That's how we're going to solve their problem. Thank you. I'll just ask a silly question. Uh, how do you define a newspaper? Uh, well, there's, it, there's about 1,200 daily, 1,600 daily newspapers. Then there's about 6,700 non-dailies, which would be weeklies or bi-weeklies. Um, so we're defining it in that context. So these are entities that still print paper? Yes. So you would not call the Seattle PI a newspaper anymore? 
No. Interesting. Okay. Right. I mean, they are an online publication now. Um, see, they, the problem with the PI, they, they went too far before they changed. You know, they lost $14 million last year, and Hertz finally said, no more. <laughs> and, and as Tim said, they have to wake up now and change, or they're all going to go over the ravine. So the value of a newspaper is the reporting that, that professional reporters do. Past that, everything's been replaced. So by Craigslist and local social media and, and, and everything else, I'm not sure the business model that newspapers have can be modified to be saved. Right. I'm kind of getting the you know, next innovation on buggy whip sort of feel. Right. Well, the, clearly they're being attacked from all sides, but most yeah. of their cost is in paper, ink, and gasoline. The cost of journalism is not very high. Uh, local, local news is their asset. Mm. Uh, national, international news, total commodity. Local news is their asset, and there's more information that's relevant than just local news. And so if they can aggregate relevant content from the community and redistribute it, it becomes more relevant to all of the individuals. Uh, and we can, don't have enough time now to explain all of the additional revenue streams that layer in, but it's way beyond advertising. And you don't see the fight that API is putting up now about revenue streams for them to have any impact here? No, okay.